NVIDIA. Earnings are tomorrow, May 22nd. Everybody's excited. The big question for me, is this a buy at $950 per share just before earnings? Now, a lot of decisions to be made in the next 24 hours, so let's get started. Now, this isn't my first rodeo. It's also not my first video about NVIDIA. My first video was in October of 2020, telling you this thing is about to explode. The stock was $138 per share. It is now 950, so it's safe to say that we were in pretty early. I'm not gonna say we were the earliest, but we hit it right on time. Now, about six months ago, I've also released a video telling you, hey, this isn't too late. This is your last chance before the stock doubles again. Six months ago, video comes out, stock does 90%. So it's safe to say we're not riding the NVIDIA hype train here on this channel. We've been through it quite early and we actually know what we're talking about. Now, the big question is, what's going on right now? The stock is obviously up 200% of the past year and 90% of the past six months. So is it too expensive at 950? Should you wait after earnings? Let's dig in. Now, look, AI is the king of this new industrial revolution. It's all about AI. And NVIDIA is all about the AI hardware. All the infrastructure that every single company in America and pretty much in the entire world right now is built on AI hardware that is manufactured by NVIDIA. Now, you're gonna be surprised to know that NVIDIA also has its hands in other plates. A lot of software related products for AI also come from NVIDIA. It's a multi-headed monster when it comes to AI, and it's not by coincidence. NVIDIA spent the last 10 years, ever since about 2015, developing AI products on the hardware and software side. They've gotten into this quite early, and now, they're reaping the benefits. Now, after OpenAI boosted the entire AI industry, NVIDIA basically flew outside of the stratosphere because everybody wants their stuff. Even if you have other alternatives right now in the market and you don't have a lot, people are willing to wait months and months and months to get the NVIDIA stuff. This is the gold standard. It's pretty much a monopoly right now. Now, how long is it gonna stay a monopoly? Nobody really knows, but it is at least years away from actual competition. Now, I'm going to be uh, very clear here, and I want you to listen to me. A lot of people will tell you that NVIDIA is just another case of Cisco. When the internet came up, Cisco was doing a lot of infrastructure work. It flew up out of the stratosphere for the same reasons, and then it landed back to Earth. Now, this isn't the same story, not at all. With the invention of internet, a lot of one-time infrastructure investments had to be made with Cisco. This is absolutely just the ground level of the next 10 years of a complete revamp of the way we do business in America, in the Western world, pretty much everywhere. NVIDIA is going to be providing the hardware for this industry, at least for the next 10 years, at the very least. And even if we have some competition enter this market in three or four or five years and NVIDIA loses some of its pricing power, at the very least, it becomes a multi-headed monster like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon in cloud services. So NVIDIA at the very least in five years holds about 30% of this market. They're not gonna go away. And the level of obsolescence of hardware and software in this business is absolutely insane. This isn't the internet. For the next 10, 15, 20 years, there's gonna be a lot of business to be made and NVIDIA is gonna have a huge chunk of it. And a lot of people are freaking out right now because we're hitting all-time highs, both on NASDAQ and the S&P 500 and even the Dow Jones. So people are naturally fearful about what's going on. And that is a valid concern. The only issue is that this is a once in a couple of decades event. The last time we had a similar event like this was pretty much the invention of the internet. And if we kind of track it back all the way to 1994 with the launch of Netscape, then we had about 120% on the NASDAQ for the next two years after that. If we kind of look at the invention of AI as the release of a chat GPT back in November of 2022, the NASDAQ only did about 58% since. So if we compare what happened with Netscape to what's going on with chat GPT, we're still halfway there. And I'm going to even argue that chat GPT is a much more critical invention than Netscape. This is probably as big as electricity. So I'm expecting a way bigger bull cycle for this thing. Now, I'm going to be straightforward with you. That doesn't mean that we're going to go straight up into the elevator outside of the stratosphere. There's going to be a lot of pullbacks, a lot of volatility. I'll show you in a second exactly how insane this can be. NVIDIA is trading at $950 per share. 
That is a 52-week high, all-time high, whatever you want to call this, at the very least, very close to it. The thing is, NVIDIA is actually trading at forward PE of only 29. When Microsoft is at 35, AMD is at 30, and plenty of other companies are in the 50s. So at 29 PE, the best AI hardware, the monopoly in the entire AI infrastructure industry is trading at 29 PE, not expensive. I guess it's not penny picking off the railroad tracks like some would want, but it's not an expensive stock. Now, if you look at the company from a valuation perspective and you run a DCF, kind of reverse engineer DCF, you look at this price right now, $950, and you kind of reverse engineer it backwards to see what kind of growth percentage is assumed here. So we've done it. And at $950, at 10% discount, this reflects a 44% annual revenue growth for the next five years. NVIDIA has done that and some. Over the past five years, NVIDIA has increased its revenues by 400%. Over the past three years, by 260%. Over the past year, by 125%. So putting on a 45% increase on revenues per year for the next five years on a company like NVIDIA, with everything that's going on in the AI sector is not outside the realm of reason. I'm not saying that's a cheap assumption. I'm just saying that if anybody can do it, it's NVIDIA. And so far, they've done much, much better than that 45%. Having said that, NVIDIA still has a lot of risks built in. It's not like buying a government bond. It's not like a treasury. There's a lot of risks involved. Right now, we look at NVIDIA, everything looks peachy. 54% operating margin. 250% increase in cash over the past five years. The company is doing great. The margins are spectacular. The demand is endless. But at some point, there's a good chance the competition will come. They're going to bite into the market share of NVIDIA and also reduce its pricing power, cutting into the margins. That might happen. You might have an economic downturn. We might have a general market crash or at least a pullback. Geopolitical risks are always there. And at some point, NVIDIA won't be a monopoly. That's the thing that we also have to understand here. It's not going to remain a monopoly forever. But at the very least, we're talking about NVIDIA still holding about 30% of that market, even once it actually is filled with more competitors. Now, short-term volatility on a stock like NVIDIA is something that you can't ignore. We as humans, we tend to kind of ignore the idea that the stock can absolutely swing in any direction, but it can, and it will, and it's going to be very, very painful. Now, the stock went up 90% over the past six months. That's a lot. It's up 200% over the past year. It's not going to just keep going up like this forever without pulling back, without correcting. You have to understand it's not just a possibility. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Now, you look at the stock market right now, and the numbers are spectacular. The first six months of 2024 were absolutely out of this world. Now, we did 10.5% on the S&P 500, just in Q1 alone. Another 1% in Q2. But to get a 10% return on the S&P 500 within the first quarter of the year only happened 11 times since 1950. So in 75 years, this happened 11 times. It doesn't happen often. Now, the good news is when that happens, those 11 times, 10 out of 11 times, the market kept going up for another 11% from that point on. The problem is that whenever we have this exuberant market, the volatility is absolutely insane. Even in years when we had 10% plus in Q1 and another 11% till the end of the year, the average pullback in a market like that since 1950 to today was 11%. 11% pullback on the S&P 500 was the average. That means that the stock like NVIDIA can drop and swing like crazy. It's true that we have a lot of money on the sideline. There's a lot of money market accounts right now dying to jump back in. It's true that the Middle East didn't really break out into this whole regional war. All prices are low. It's true that the rates will probably come down. Everything is 100% true. But the market is currently short term in an overbought position. And it just keeps going up. So short term volatility for NVIDIA is something that you have to be careful about even if you love the stock. And since none of us can really time the market and we don't have a time machine, the only way to get into NVIDIA at this price level with this expected volatility in the short term is not to try and time the market. Instead of chasing this stock and FOMOing into it and trying to catch it before it explodes again, be smart. Do what we've done for the past four years on our community. 
we started DCA, dollar cost average, into the stock in October 2020, when the stock was $138 per share. We have been dollar cost averaging ever since, and we're sitting pretty. We've never chased the stock. What we've done in our community, by the way, you can check it out at patreon.com forward slash Tom Nash. What we've done in our community is essentially dollar cost average through the past four years. But right now is the perfect example of a time where we slow down the DCA. We ramp it up when the stock drops and we slow it down when the stock is peaking next to its 52 week high. Basically, to keep it very simple, if the stock is anywhere from the 52 week high to 20% below that, so from 950 to $780, that is the range when you still want to DCA slow. Let's say that they have a bad earnings reaction or whatever happens, or in two weeks, in two months, the stock drops below $780, below that 20% off of the 52 week high, then you want to double down your DCA. It's as simple as that. Dollar cost average, buy a little bit every single week, and just slowly create a weighted average that's much closer to the bottom than to the top. We actually teach these things and more on our academy. Now, the link is gonna be below to join on Patreon. You can join the regular Patreon and join the Discord. You can join the academy. And I'll tell you what, you can actually just join the freaking Discord. The Discord is free to join for free members, discord.gg slash Tom Nash. If you just wanna hang out with us, talk with us, you don't wanna be in the Patreon, the academy, that's fine. Come join, it's free. And if you want to analyze stocks like NVIDIA, look at the forward PE, look at your own DCF, analyze, model, do everything at about 20 bucks per month. We got Stock MVP, a platform we built for retail investors, me and my partner. It's just as good as anything out there and better. We have way more tools. It is custom tailored for retail investors, built by retail investors, seven days for free to try it out. If you love it, stay. If you don't love it, just cancel. You won't pay a single dollar. Try it out for a few days and let me know what you think in the comments below or in Discord. I'll see you in the next one.